Elliott, Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, Million Dollar Bill, Mr. Popular. There's a lot of nicknames that Bill Elliott has received over the years. Bill Elliott isn't one of the first drivers you think of when you bring up NASCAR legends. People usually say Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Richard Petty, but he is a great driver. Bill Elliott had a lot of success in the 1980s. After running part-time in the 1970s and early 80s, Elliott's career started to take off in 1983 where he scored his first career win at Riverside, doing this with Mellon Racing which was previously owned by Bill Elliott's father. Elliott and his team were championship contenders right when they went full-time, finishing third in the points in 1983 and 1984. 1985 will be an absolutely huge year for Bill. He won 11 races, finished second in the points and had an average finish of 8.7. Just downright domination. In 1987, Bill Elliott set a record that still holds today and probably will never be broken. At Talladega, Bill Elliott recorded the fastest speed in NASCAR history, topping 212 miles per hour. Bill accomplished a lot in NASCAR, but when people think of his name, they think of this record, he said. It's not many records in NASCAR that can be touched, and that qualifying record at Talladega is one of them. Going into 1988, Bill Elliott was still looking for his first championship, and by the end of the season, he accomplished that. In 1992, Bill Elliott went to drive with Junior Johnson, it seemed like it was the start of a beautiful relationship, with Bill scoring 5 wins and finishing runner up in the points. But the next two seasons weren't that great. Junior Johnson's team slowly was fading, but Bill Elliott managed to get Junior Johnson one last win for his team in 1994. In 1995, Bill Elliott started his own race team, but it didn't go well at, at all. He didn't score a single win from 1995 to 2000. After dominating NASCAR in the 1980s and having some success in the early 90s, Bill Elliott's career was going downhill. Not only was he not performing well, but suffered an injury at Talladega in 1996, having him miss some races. Was Bill Elliott fading because he was aging? Was it his team, or was it a combination of both? Well, it was his race team. Bill Elliott still had it, and he'll end up showing that going into the 2000s where he experienced his resurgence. It was a ton of new in NASCAR in 2001. Fox and NBC coming on board to broadcast NASCAR was one of the two big stories going into the 2001 season. The other was the return of Dodge. It was the first time they've been back in the sport in decades, so the hype was real. You had new teams entering the sport, and one of those teams was Everham Racing. Ray Everham was coming off a legendary run with Jeff Gordon, winning tons of races and three championships, while Hendrick. Now he tackles the ownership role. Ray Evanham started a two-car organization. One of his drivers was Casey Atwood, who was a hot prospect at the time, and Bill Elliott, a young gun and an elder driver. Nobody, including Bill Elliott himself, didn't know what to expect from Evanham, but they surprised everyone coming out of the gate strong, sweeping the front row for the 2001 Daytona 500. Kicking off the season with a top five in the Daytona 500, Bill and his team hoped to take that momentum forward, and they didn't. Bill Elliott's 01 season wasn't bad even though his average finish was a 19.9. The team shown glitches of speed throughout the season at tracks like Pocono, Michigan, and Indianapolis. It was obvious that the team was still trying to find its footing. After having a pretty solid summer, things kind of went downhill after that. Now that may seem like this wasn't the start of a resurgence at this point, but Bill Elliott was having the best season he's had since 1997, believe it or not. It wasn't by a lot, but 01 was a year that was faring pretty well. Let's jump to the end of the 01 season. The field stops at Homestead for the 34th race of the season. Bill Elliott's last win came in 1994. Most NASCAR fans during this time thought Bill Elliott wouldn't visit Victory Lane anymore. But at Homestead in 2001, he proved that he could still get the job done. Your 
At the age of 45, Bill Elliott returned to victory lane, and it's not like he lucked into the win either. He fought off his teammate Casey Atwood for the win and got the job done. I know a 15th place points finish and a 19.9 average finish ain't nothing to ride home about, but 2001 was Bill Elliott's best season since 1994. That one win alone already makes it better than his previous six seasons. But when you look at how many top fives and top tens he scored, it was the most he scored since 1997. 2001 overall for Elliott was a solid season, and he'll end up returning to Everham for the 2002 season where Bill and his whole team look to take the next step. Going into the 2002 season, Bill Elliott looked to be right there with Sterling Marlin, who was the only dodge that was consistently competitive. He started out the 02 season bouncing in and out of the top 10 in points. Mediocre runs some weeks and other weeks he'll be racing towards the front. Having crashed and suffered an engine failure as well didn't help even when trying to stay in the top 10 in points. Bill Elliott and his team could never get the consistency going. At most, they'll probably get like two top 10s in a row and then find themselves finishing in the teens or 20s. The team has speed though, especially in qualifying, scoring four poles in 2002. In total, he had six front row starts that season. By race 12, Bill Elliott and his team find themselves once again in the top 10 in points, and they stayed there for quite a while. The great news is that Bill Elliott and his team were in the top 10, but they lacked in the wins department. That was until race 20, Pocono. Bill Elliott started first, but showed early in that race that he wasn't the fastest car. That would be Sterling Marlin, who led a race high of 106 laps. Even though Marlin dominated, he had company late in the race. With Bill Elliott winning the previous year and getting a win in 02, it was the first time that he had back-to-back -back seasons with a win since 1991 and 1992, once again showing that Bill Elliott still had it. The next race was the Brickyard 400, a crown jewel race in NASCAR. Back in the day, teams would usually take whatever setup they used at Pocono to Indy because both of those tracks are kind of similar. So of course with Bill Elliott winning at Pocono, they would take that same setup to the Brickyard and it paid off. Bill Elliott captured another NASCAR crown jewel, the Brickyard 400. A Daytona 500 champion, a NASCAR champion, and now a Brickyard 400 winner. This is one of those feel good wins. Nobody couldn't be upset that Bill won, especially winning a big race like the Brickyard 400. Bill jumped from 9th to 6th in the points, and some thought that Bill could make a late season charge for the championship after scoring back to back wins. Well, that didn't happen because once again the team was inconsistent. It looked like Elliott was going to finish top 10 in the points, but crashing at Martinsville and a water pump issue at Rockingham dropped him outside of the top 10 in points. Bill went on to finish 13th in the points in 2002. It was obvious. Bill Elliott still had it. He could still win races. Going into the 2003 season, could Bill Elliott put together the consistency and possibly challenge for the championship? Uh, yeah. The 2003 season started off very bad for Bill Elliott. This dude was sitting 32nd in the points by Talladega. Yeah, he suffered some engine issues, but overall they were just slow, downright slow. They didn't even have qualifying speed, which was one of their strengths in the previous season. 
It seemed like Bill wasn't even going to finish top 15 points, but very late in the season, him and his team finally turned things around, scoring five top 10s in the final six races in the season, jumped Bill from 12th to 9th in the standings. During that good stretch, he got his final career cup win. Yes, this would be Bill Elliott's last career cup win, but this should have been his second to last cup win. The final race of the season will be Homestead. Bill Elliott looking for back-to-back -back wins like what he did the previous year. Bill Elliott dominated the race leading 189 laps. The race seemed like it was over. But unfortunately, Bill Elliott cut down a tire on the final lap coming off of turn two. That was heartbreaking for the 47-year-old he still scored a top 10 in the race and he's proceeded to finish top 10 in the points. But that was gut wrenching for Bill Elliott. And to make things even more heartbreaking, this would end up being Bill Elliott's final full season as a cup driver. Overall, he went on a high note. The last couple of years of his career, he showed that he still had it. During Bill Elliott's resurgence, he scored four wins and got a top 10 points finish. One of those four wins being a crown jewel win. I'm pretty sure nobody, including Bill Elliott himself, saw him accomplishing what he did from 2001 to 2003. Bill didn't completely stop racing in Cup. From 2004 to 2012, he ran a part-time schedule but usually didn't fare well. He eventually quit Cup racing and was more focused on mentoring his son, Chase Elliott, who turned out to be a top-notch driver. Bill Elliott took a risk starting his own race team and it simply just didn't work out. Usually we see drivers struggle during a period of their career, but with Bill, he spent probably his best years driving for his own race team, which wasn't successful. Thankfully, someone saw that he was still an awesome race car driver. And once he went to Everham Racing, he proved that he was still awesome Bill from Dawsonville.